Today we're looking at dynamic stretching in the elephant. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're going to be talking about dynamic stretching and the elephant. Last time on the mat, we looked at dynamic stretching with the big cat stretch with the chair, and so now we're transferring it onto the reformer. And this is a wonderful way to uh, really get the, the essence of the big cat stretch is to do it on the reformer. So the reformer, you have all the support of the carriage and also you have the communications with the spring. So let's begin with that same choreography of the big cat stretch on the reformer using the yoga strap again. So we'll start with the yoga strap around the forearms. I have two red springs on at this point and bringing my hands onto the bar and then lining up my feet, maybe with the shoulder blocks. The feet can come forward if you'd like. And so from here, I want to wrap my fingers at first and imagine I'm trying to um, bring the bar back to me and kind of pull the bar apart at the same time. And so I'm feeling that tension of the yoga strap onto my forearms. I think I'm going to bring it up just a little bit more too. Good. So feeling that tension of the yoga strap. And then from here, I can really feel that same thing that we talked about with the big cat stretch on the mat, that my arms are being injected into my mid back. I'm not just pushing the bar forward and kind of hanging into my rib cage and shoulders, but as I'm reaching my hands into the bar, at the same time, the top of my arm bone is being injected into my spine. So I'm really creating a sense of a tensegrity model through my, my skeleton. From here, we can go into that same kind of a big cat stretch. So I'm going to imagine um, that I'm trying to kind of push pull on the bar. So bringing the left side of the bar up and the right side of the bar down. So what I'm doing here also is pulling the bar back with my left hand and pushing the bar forward with my right hand and then gently coming back to center and going to the other side. So pushing the bar forward with my left hand and pulling it back with the right as I rotate the long carousel pull of my spine towards my straight leg and then elastic recoil bringing me back to center. So bending one knee, straightening the other, and back to center. And pulling the bar apart, feeling that stretch from the center of my heel, sitting bone, side waist, and gently back to center. Now, this big cat stretch is a slow, dynamic stretch. You can also experiment with more of a fast-paced um, bounce sort of stretch, going back to our Jane Fonda days, sort of with the ballistic bouncing, but with a little bit more finesse and a little bit more information. So with this one, you can create a sense of control with the springs in the bounce. So you can start by just doing this little kind of pedaling of the feet, right? So I'm injecting my arms in. I can always wrap my hands around. That'll help you to find more connection. But once you find that in the upper back, then the fingers can be long, right? And then I'm just walking my elephant here. And then if you get this, you can stop on one leg and do a three, two, one, and in. Three, two, one, and in. So here we can incorporate a little bit of that fast paced bounce stretch that they talk about in the fascial fitness regime. Three, two, one, still staying to connected into my shoulders, into my upper back. Nice. Now, along with all of this, if you want to challenge yourself, right, the challenging part of this is getting into it by yourself, 
with the yoga strap. So this will be funny. Be really careful as you do this. It always helps to have a teacher with you, right? So you can have the yoga strap around your lower leg and your forearms. And you can do the traditional elephant, right? Make sure you're connected into your mid-back. So your traditional elephant here, long back, or rounded back. So remember, when we round the back, we tend to um, initiate the rounding from our shoulders. <laughs> Make sure that you're doing the flexion through the spine rib cage and that the shoulders are nice and relaxed. Right? And the, the tension on the yoga strap, both with my arms and my legs, is really helping me to support this. Now, along with that, with the, the yoga strap on the legs, you can also do that little big cat stretch side to side. And it makes it smaller, but more precise because I have to keep reaching into those straps. All right, let's take these off. So once I've found that connection with the yoga straps, then I'm trying to kind of memorize that feeling in my body, that sensation in my body. And then I can go on to some bigger choreography without the yoga straps. So now we're gonna look at the one-legged elephant with one leg high in the air, externally rotated. And I'm gonna do that fast-paced, kind of ballistic bounce, but with finesse and grace. And so I'm, I'm kind of pre-tensing the tissue, and then when I bring my knee in, I'm gonna get a nice stretch of all those um, hip extensors. So here we go. Hands onto the bar, the fingers can be wrapped or not. I'm in my high heels at this point. From here, I'm gonna lift my left leg up, reach into my back body, and I'm gonna do a one, two, three, and then in and stretching all those extensors of my left leg here. And then I go back and three, two, one, and in, and three, two, one, and in. Feels good. And in, good. And as I do this to support it, right, I can't just be hanging in my shoulders in my rib cage. I have to keep the whole tensegrity system of my spine, shoulders, pelvis, and that foot leg reaching into the carriage working. So I can really control that little bounce of my femur and my hip socket. Jody wrote in on the forum and she was asking about any tips that we have for training ice skaters. So this is a very challenging population. Ice skaters do so many wild things with their bodies, just balancing on that little knife edge. So their feet are highly bound in the tight shoes like a ballet dancer. But it's even in my mind a worst case scenario for the ice skater because they are just balancing on that little knife edge of the blade and going in wild trajectories of their body with really, really intense speed. So the first place that I would go with the ice skaters are their feet. I think that that is the number one highlighted place that you just have to begin with. So with the feet, I would recommend doing all of the release work that you've seen on our site. Also in the practical release workshop with Casey, I would definitely um, get a lot of those exercises into uh, the classes with your ice skaters. And then once they've created lots of options in their feet, so they have really supple, strong, reactive feet, then putting them onto the reformer and doing some of the classical footwork with different tensions of springs. So we want to take all this really nice uh, joint articulation that you found in their feet, so their feet are no longer like little clubs, but they're actually really mobile units, like the, the snake of the foot, so that they can do all sorts of things in the foot and the ankle, and then taking all of that good movement work in the foot and the ankle and putting it onto the reformer. 
and, and having them communicate with the springs and having them connect that work of the foot and ankle up into the leg and up into the pelvis. So that would be the first place that I would go. I also want to show you some um, work with the foot and the ankle that I learned last week from Tom McCook. So this is very, very simple, but it's talking to the inversion um, and eversion of the ankle joint and getting those joints very, very supple. And I think this is really important for the uh, population like skaters because there is so much injury, of course, of them rolling, especially out on their ankle. And so if we train that, if we make sure that those joints in the ankle are really responsive and they're moving in the right manner and they're transitioning in the right manner, um, then when they do roll a little bit too much, their ankle is ready for it so that they don't have that rigidity in their foot and their ankle, but they have a really responsive foot and ankle. So here's very, very simple. So you'll have your client stand up. Their free leg and foot, the leg and foot that they're not working is gonna step behind them. And then the foot that you are working, we're gonna concentrate on the, the lateral ankle. So in parallel, you're just gonna roll to that pinky toe side of the foot. Make sure that when you do this that you're not jamming out your knee and um, sticking your pelvis way out. You wanna have a little bit of a softness of your knee and just an easy, relaxed pelvis with the tail dropping down. Now here, I think the best thing to do is roll onto the bottom of the foot and then to the pinky toe side of the foot. So just do a nice, a few nice, easy pulsations in parallel kind of warming up and opening that structure of that um, outer lower leg and outer ankle. And then you can also do this in an internally rotated position. So you want your ankle to be aware of all these positions that the leg might go into. And then also in an externally rotated position. Always making sure that you're not um, sitting into the joint of your knee and always making sure that you have a, a relaxed position of your pelvis and the tissue around your sitting bones is relaxed. Um, after we have opened that lateral ankle, then you can go to the medial side of the ankle. So legs and feet are really nice and wide and you'll bend into that opposite knee and that allows you to roll to the um, big toe side of the foot and open that medial ankle. Again, you can do a little bit of the pulsation onto the whole foot and then onto the big toe side of the foot. And you want to keep your knee nice and supple and you want to always cue yourself to relax in the front of the hip and around the sitting bone so you have a nice heavy pelvic half. It's really interesting after you've done these simple ankle openings, lateral and medial, just to go into a forward bend and really notice and sense the difference in the two legs, especially in your hamstring length and tension around the sitting bone. It's really quite remarkable. So you'll come down, yep, lots and lots of difference between my two, two legs. So after you've done both legs, then you can go into a little bit of a circling on the bottom of the feet. So Tom taught us this. Um, this work, this choreography, you'll also see in jarkinesis, and you'll also see this choreography in chi running, right? So seeing it in so many places, it must be good, right? So here, you're, you're working the transition points between your um, plantar flexion, inversion, dorsiflexion, and your eversion. So you're working all the positions that your ankle joint might go into in a really small way and the transition points between those. So what that's encouraging is a real fluidity in your, the tissue of your feet and your ankles and um, a fluidity in the, the rotation of the bones. Good, so it feels really nice. So Jody, I'm really interested in how the work with your skater goes and how you might be incorporating some of the things that we talked about in here and some of the new ideas that you come up with. That's it for today. If you have a comment or question that you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, comment below or on Facebook, Twitter, or on the forum on our site. 
See you next time and never stop learning. <music>